Welcome back to Squawk Box this morning. The Federal Reserve is set to wrap up its two-day meeting today. No new policy measures are expected, but uh, the central bank could provide some more details uh, on the moves it has made so far to help the economy and financial markets since the pandemic began. The Fed could also try to provide some clarity on exactly how much damage the virus has done to the economy. Fed Chair Jerome Powell is set to hold a virtual press conference that's uh, scheduled today at 2.30 p.m. Joining us right now to talk more about the Fed and the government response to the pandemic. I want to bring in Bob Greifeld. He's former NASDAQ CEO and Virtue Financial Chairman. Uh, Bob is also a CNBC contributor. Uh, good to see you, Bob. Help good us, morning, uh, Andrew. Sort of how, we, how, we, how should we think about what we're going to hear from Jerome Powell uh, later today? And, and more importantly, what do you want to hear from him? Well, I say, one, it's remarkable what the Fed has done so far. And the moves this week to support state and local government is clearly a forceful move. It also, though, for the first time, gets the Fed directly into, I'll say, a political morass. And you saw some of that develop because what county, what states are you helping? Are you doing it in the right way? Is the proper diversity with respect to the states that you're helping? So one, Fed, great compliments to the move they've made. I like to see them continue to do what they're doing. Uh, but right now, I think they just play a steady hand. What, what about loans to large companies? You said yesterday there was, there was a headline about $500 billion in loans that are going to, going to go to big companies uh, through the Fed this time. Yeah, so that's a remarkable level of support. Now, I'm not sure the economic indicators really show that we need that at this point in time. Uh, you know, what we're missing in all these discussions today are the discussions about moral hazard. If you remember back in 2008, we heard that all the time. So once you get further and further in support of private enterprise, that discussion has to surface at some point. And when you talk about large companies with large access to diverse capital sources, uh, it's going to be impossible to avoid that debate. So where do you come down, though, at, on that debate, given that we're, we're in the midst of it? Let's start the debate right now. Should we be bailing out some of these companies? Well, the, the question is, what is the greater good? So you want to do that as an option of last resort. And the hard part is to understand where you are at that last resort option. So I would say right now, based upon the economic indicators we have today, it is too soon for the Fed to get involved uh, with that type of support of large corporations. Right now, the capital markets are what? relatively open. There's a lot of debt financing right. available in the marketplace. What do you think, though, about uh, the Treasury plan, the PPP plan, and how it's rolled out, uh, how it's been applied in, to a certain degree? I shouldn't say the PPP plan is being applied to the airlines, but, but the, the larger program is being applied to the airlines. And now, clearly, companies that thought that they could access this to try to help their employees are finding out that even if they were technically eligible, maybe not really. Yeah, so I would say I heard Steve on your show yesterday. I, I disagree with him to a point. I think they moved the goalposts. If you read the original writing of the PPE, it didn't talk very clearly about alternative uh, financing sources. You just had a demonstrator certify you had a need. So I think some of the goalposts have moved on, on that, which could be a better way to do it. I'm not arguing that. But to say the earlier companies did it wrong, I think, is, is uh, certainly incorrect. Uh, so I think the PPP and is a great program. I kind of agree with your point, Andrew, is that an employee is an employee. So whether you're in a company of 400 people or 600 people, it shouldn't matter to you. Right. On, on that hey, point, I, we, we asked Mnuchin, yeah, we asked Mnuchin about that, Bob. And he said, no, those early guys were bad actors in this because I thought the same thing. It seemed to me like it was an evolution. It was happening so quickly and the markets weren't stable at that point. So it was a question as to whether or not companies would be able to get quick funding in some of these issues. But when we talked to him yesterday, yeah. he, he basically said, no, they were bad actors. I, I was yeah, surprised that's to I, hear that. I thought. Yeah, I disagree. You know, I was I'm an invested in a small company. I had to certify I reread the document yesterday. It did not talk in any way, shape, or form about alternative uh, financing. So I think that's revisionist history, unless I happen to have a different document than other people have received. So that was not part of the original deal and the document I reread again yesterday. So I believe firmly the goalpost was moved. 
But the question is, have the goalposts really been moved because the document unto itself hasn't changed? We were talking yesterday, not on the air, but to a plastic surgeon in California uh, who makes a ton of money uh, and has a, a, a large net worth. He has 12 employees. Obviously, he can't do surgeries right now. These are all elective right. things. Should he be eligible? Should he be eligible for the loan or not? And he was saying this is he said on the on a piece of paper, it says I should be eligible for the loan. If I take the loan, am I going to be outed for taking the loan and shamed for it? But if I don't take the loan, I'm probably going to furlough my employees. Yeah. So I, I think right now uh, I, I tie back to your point. Right. These employees, these 12 employees should be taken care of independent of where the surgeons at. So in this kind of program, where they did it in record time to give them credit, it obviously is operating with a blunt instrument. You know you're going to make mistakes. And in this situation, the plastic surgeon should be able to get the loan, should be able to keep his employees on the payroll. I had the same situation with my dentist, who is applying for the loan, right? He's there for emergency surgeries only, cannot, cannot do uh, anything routine. And obviously, his revenue is down by 80 percent. He wants to keep his employees on the payroll, and he should be able to do that, the same as the plastic surgeon. So this was meant to be quick. Right. The, the, the get issue the is money the, plastic, the, the plastic surgeon saying the plastic surgeon saying somebody's going to shame me because they know I own a Bentley, right? I mean, this but this is this is the yeah. this is the complicated part about the moral hazard. Well, I don't. Yeah, I agree, but it's not that complicated when you look at it through the prism of the employees, right? Because that surgeon will, in fact, lay off those employees, right? They'll go through unemployment, so they're not without a social safety net. But the fact is, it's about the employees for the PPE. And that's who should come first, and they should get that money and should not be shamed. You have a different. Real quick before Andrew's we go, though. right from the perspective how feel, of how are you oh, go not going to shame somebody in a Bentley? Andrew, you're right. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 it puts them in a crazy position. Oh, poor it me. It does. Let me get my Bentley right. and yeah. drive away. I, I agree. Uh, it's it's not black go, and white, but feel, again, I say the, the employees come first. How do you feel about the airlines in terms of not not saving the airlines per se, but the shareholders? I mean, it's, it's fascinating. Delta, Delta still has a, a rather huge market cap, and the government has now come in and not just provided, obviously, a loan, but effectively a grant. Uh, with, and, right. and even though there are warrants, it's it's tiny. You gave me the easier question. I thought you were going to ask about the cruise lines, which is more difficult. I mean, the airlines, I think we have an accepted process of putting equity into companies, right? We can do that through some kind of structured note. The government should come into the airline as an equity owner, not unlike any other. And they're really they're the equity owner of last resort. And the warrants they get should be somewhat market tested, right? Because these airlines obviously need governmental help. The government should not be exposed entirely to this investment. They should represent equity uh, in the cap table.